Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am V.me. We have once again a video that has been long requested. This is the top three builds for brutality. The last time we did one of these videos was on version 1.4, and we are now up to version 1.8 coming soon. So there's going to be a, a few things that are different. Uh, once version 1.8 launches, I highly doubt there will be a huge change to this list. Uh, but just keep a lookout in case I want to make any changes. This top three list is a compilation of my own personal choices for victory. Of course, every weapon in the game can win. And please don't take this list as the end all be all only way to beat dead cells. Just like in the past, this will be a 4BC and higher perspective. So don't forget your items in 4BC will have more fixes and a higher power level than the ones in the lower difficulty. So with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. My first top three brutality build, always one that gets recommended, always one that gets asked about, but it is the... Oh, there's little music notes. Uh-huh. R&B, the Rhythm and Bozuki. R&B is the brand new Bad Seed guitar. Well, it's more like a loot. And honestly, it's probably one of my favorite items in the game right now. R&B's playstyle is really good in terms of just popping enemies as soon as you see them. It's also a very good boss fighting weapon because of the crit mechanic. The damage on it is very high and all of the affixes are godly. So if you find an RMB, there's a very high chance that same one can take you all the way to the end of the game. Of course, RMB is split between red and green. I would say my favorite version is probably the red version. Uh, green is viable to win with, but in terms of a top three, I think I want to have it in brutality instead. So for R&B build, typically what I would run is something like the Bozuki itself, either a shield or a boy axe in the secondary slot. R&B is actually really good specifically because of one of the fixes on the slower weapons. Um, that is specifically the victim slow nearby enemies when they die. Because of the way how Scythe, Bozuki, Broadsword, War Spear, all of those items work is it really needs the map to be kind of under control. Um, if you're running Berserk, sometimes it's not that big a deal, but every little bit helps. That victim slow all nearby enemies is a godsend in most of these runs. Just being able to keep monsters from getting onto you before you're able to get your swing off is something that not a lot of brutality weapons can do. Skills are probably going to be split between two turrets or a turret and some kind of grenade. Going with the mutations, typically why I always go with RMB is melee mutation. Melee mutation is one of the few mutations in the game that completely rebalances all of the cons for every weapon that you use it with. RMB has an issue with having to hit monsters two times that could lead to death and melee almost completely negates that. The other two mutations that you choose alongside this is almost player preference. Um, there are some games where I go Frenzy and Dead Inside. It gives you a lot of lifesteal on the RMB's melee attacks. The other option is probably Berserk and Soldier. Berserk's a pretty generic melee mutation. Getting it is almost never the wrong choice. Um, and to be honest, just sometimes I don't like to take it. Uh, but because we don't have any more opportunity to heal, I can't use Dead Inside. So I may as well use Soldier Resistance instead. That way I can at least eat food that's on the map. But the choice is really yours on which one you do. Doesn't really matter based off biomes or based off monsters. Chances are, whichever one you take, as long as you have melee, you're probably going to be fine. Going back to the skills, as I said, the RMB is enough to kill pretty much every monster in the game. Whether it's an elite, 
whether it's a normal monster, whether it's a boss, you don't really need any kind of L2 or R2, any kind of skill buttons in order to win the game. Uh, that being said, what we will take are things that we can just sit on top of and attack with. So that could be a turret such as the flamethrower, which is already a rank S item. It could be the cleaver, which is equally as strong as flamethrower. You'll also see me use Telluric Shock when I'm using the RMB. Uh, what Telluric Shock does is it takes advantage of your mutations when you're running Brutality, specifically the ones that do extra stuff on melee kills. Uh, for example, if you're running Berserk, you can Telluric Shock into a crowd and get the damage reduction. If you're running melee, you can Telluric Shock into a cloud and slow the enemies. And all this assumes that the Telluric Shock doesn't just straight one-shots them. Of course, Telluric Shock has that advantage of... In of course, Telluric Shock has that advantage of iframes when you press the button. We've even done silly stuff like jumping into lava, jumping into electricity, and you're fine. So when you're fighting things like the Lacerator, Timekeeper, Conjunctivious Tentacles, it's a lot of opportunity to use something like a Telluric Shock over something like a grenade. Moving on to my second of the top three brutality weapons. I'm still a huge fan of the Oil Sword. Oil Sword does a lot with fire, as we all know. And even now on version 1.8, it's still just as strong as it has been. I think my favorite version of the Oil Sword is with the Molotov on the offhand. Uh, what that is is the firebrand. You can actually assign both the Molotov and the oil sword on the same button and get off both attacks and prep your crits for the next monster. Always make sure that the Molotov is on the left-handed weapon. That way it's thrown first before you swipe with the oil sword. If you're not comfortable with having a Molotov, then you can probably just take a shield um, chances are most normal monsters will die just to a couple of oil sword hits, but the shield gives you s just a little bit more reliability on ranged monsters, think inquisitors or arbiters. As far as the skills go, because we're going to be running instincto with the oil sword, you're probably going to want last ring aura and a grenade of some kind. The other thing I should definitely mention is telluric shock. So Telluric Shock, if you didn't forget, it's a down slam. So when you do a down slam, your amulet can also apply whatever is going on. So when you're using the oil sword, you might get yourself an amulet that does fire on down slam. So that might give you additional chances to get your crits off. Telluric Shock's also really good as just a straight generic wave clear kind of item. So when you're getting cooldown reduction off that Instincto, you're actually getting some really good biome clearing power that doesn't require like aiming or anything like that. And it gives you immunity, straight invincibility frames while you're actually in the middle of jumping on a monster. Knife Dance is also a pretty good choice. The reason I don't typically get a Knife Dance is because there's too many powers in the game. The odds of me finding like a fire grenade or a giant grenade or any kind of red grenade are higher than finding a knife dance in a shop. So whenever I'm opening a shop, I'm probably going for the grenade instead. Of course, you could go with a flamethrower. I personally don't, but flamethrowers are already so strong on their own. It's almost a really easy thing to pick up. That doesn't require much for aiming or even thought before you press the button. Now as far as mutations are concerned, as I said, we're going to be taking Instinct of the Master of Arms. That's that Instincto we talked about. For the other two mutations, this is almost the same as the RMB. You can either go Frenzy Dead Inside or Berserk Soldier. Both of those are high HP builds and helps get your win rate higher. With the Dead Inside, you're going to get your HP back when you're using Frenzy. With Soldier, you're going to be getting your HP back from just eating regular food. And don't forget, when you're using Berserk, you can kill monsters and then eat infected food until it gets nerfed. So there's more food on the map than you think in 4BC+. You don't have to sell it all, 
Worst case scenario, you drag a monster all the way to the infected food, kill it on the spot, and then eat the food immediately. Lacerating Aura here is kind of a no-brainer. You're getting the Instincto crits off, and the Lacerating Aura has less downtime so long as you're getting that cooldown reduction up. It doesn't really make sense to me to use something like a turret or to use something like infantry grenade in a build like this. We want to have something that does damage constantly, but also has some kind of cooldown attached to it. I like to think Lazaring Aura is probably one of the best in class of damage throughout its cooldown when you have cooldown reduction in the kit. One other piece to the oil sword that we just found recently was actually using ice shards in place of that molotov. So it's the same concept. You have the ice shards in the front, molotov in the rear. You're gonna throw the ice shard first and get the slow apply to the monster. But then what you'll also be able to do is your next attack is an ice shard on a monster that has oil on it. We've gotten some really, really strong ice shards that have been able to clear biomes perfectly fine, even despite the nerfs. And because it's being paired with an oil sword, oil sword's already really strong on its own. So being able to kill monsters with the same button, we're still pressing square the whole time, while ice shards ammo is depleted, it's really, really good. All right, so last build. This one is something that I've been using a lot lately, even though I've been a hater of it for a while. And that is the Sadist Stiletto Open Wounds Phaser. Now, that's a three-piece build. Remember, this video is about full builds. So the real power and the real win rates come from getting these pieces together. So how this works is that Open Wounds applies bleeding and lets you crit with Sadist Stiletto. Everybody knows that. So Phaser is really good because Phaser applies open wounds. It's a melee attack. You teleport behind the enemy, Wesker style. You apply that bleed, and then you get the instant crit on your Sadist Stiletto. Now, what that means is that your biome clears are going to be really easy when you pair this with Instincto. Just about every kill is going to give you a reset on your phaser, which means that Seda Stiletto now turns into a one button, one tap machine. The only monsters that will probably not die to this is something like a golem and maybe a slasher in prison depths. But once you get out of prison depths, you're pretty much sailing. Don't forget to try to roll your Seda Stiletto so it gets bonus damage to either bleed or poison. Bonus points if you can get both. It's not that it's completely rare in 4 BC and higher, but every once in a while you might find a Say Stiletto that's worth a lot of money, and that reroll is gonna cost you 20,000 plus. So if you're lucky to get it early, that's great, but be prepared to spend a little extra coin just to make sure you can kill these bosses faster. For your offhand, I probably use a shield with this. I don't really like using Hokuto Bow because chances are whatever you're fighting is gonna die pretty quickly before you even get to press triangle. As I said earlier, the phaser is pretty much one of the link pins of the actual build itself. And then because you're gonna be running instinct, you may as well be using a lacerating aura or a powerful grenade. Now, of course, you do have the option of playing a turret, that being flamethrower or the cleaver. You could even go knife dance if you really want to, but I feel as though that's a little redundant for the bleeding. Lacerating Aura is perfect because the aura will actually do bonus damage to bleeding on a fairly often basis. So as long as you get that, then it's going to be doing a lot of damage. Now, because we can't run dead inside here, I'm probably going to be taking Soldier Resistance as my third mutation. You do have the option to go Frenzy, but that's going to make your HP a little smaller than I'm comfortable with. So having Open Wounds, Instincto, Soldier Resistance gives you just enough survivability for biomes and bosses, and also some pretty high damage when you put Sadist, Phaser, and Lacerating Aura behind it. 
so there we have it those are three builds again these are my personal choices for relatively easy wins if you don't have these unlocked i highly suggest that you do so but i don't want to say to not unlock other things you're more than welcome to unlock every weapon in the game if you feel like it but these are some of my personal favorites when it comes to brutality builds. Other than that, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If there's a specific build you didn't see here, feel free to leave it in the comments. If you like how some of these builds sound and you want to see it in action, feel free to follow me at twitch.tv slash v.me. You might see me running some of these every now and then. If there's a specific build here that you don't really understand, feel free to send me a message in the comments or on Twitter, and I'll try to be a little more descriptive of how the build works. Thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you all next time.